We're getting started in about two to three minutes. Two to three minutes, we're gonna get started. Let's go. Drop into the chat where you're tuning in from. started about 90 seconds guys 90 seconds let's go Sixty seconds. Get started. One minute.
stop this share what is going on everybody welcome to today's role playing conversion call now i feel like it's been forever since i've been on here i know that christine has been holding it down the fort for those of you guys that don't know who i am my name is john marone i am the sync conversion specialist um and every time we do one of these calls we always have a process for it right We're really intentional and that goes we're doing mindset first and then skill set second but i just want to jam real quick before we get in there on what happened last week last week we were in phoenix um and man was it hot by the way <laughs> i live in destin florida when i got off that flight it was sizzling hot so we had about 65 people calling after um probably about seven hours of um you know role play and mindset and uh, really understanding the art and science behind sales and um, then obviously the understanding of human behavior and out of the 65 or so callers, we had 66 set appointments in one hour dialing. And I don't know the exact number, but well over $700,000 in commission to be made out of that room in one hour of dialing. So I bring this up because if you are either coming to the summit in October or you can get to Atlanta, we, we never do a conversion day by itself. Right. If anybody's ever been to a Sync U conversion day is day three. Well, October 19th, we're doing a conversion day all by itself. And it's going to be in Atlanta. It's the day before summit, but October 19th, I believe is the date. Um, but it's going to be the Wednesday before the summit. I'll tell you right now when it is. Uh, yeah, October 19th. So if you want to get your ticket, it's only like 97 bucks. <laughs> it's insane. And you can make it to Atlanta on October 19th. I highly suggest you do it. What I want you to do is I want you to reach out to me. Hit me up on Instagram at Real John Marone. I'll put it here so you guys can go ahead and just click the link. And I want you to hit me up on Instagram. And I want you to just say ticket um, in my DMs. And I will get you the link to go ahead and reserve your spot to come to our conversion day, October 19th. Once again, we don't really ever do a conversion day by itself, um, but we are doing it October 19th in Atlanta. So grab your tickets. I just dropped my Instagram handle down there. Click that link, hit me up first, hit that follow, of course, <laughs> um, but say the word ticket um, and I will send you a link to get it for 97 bucks. Now let's dive into today's call. What I want to talk about. We are in October, which means we're in Q4 of 2022. This year flew by. I'm curious to know in the chat, are you on pace for your goals? Yes or no? Are you on pace for your goals? Yes or no? We're talking about strictly business today. We'll talk about that. Yes or no? Be honest here. Are you on pace? I see a lot of no's in here. A lot of no, 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 no. And I get it. <laughs> Look. We, we had some crazy things that happened um, this year in real estate, right? I'm sure we all can agree on that. There's been a lot of fear. There's a lot of, been a lot of circumstantial things that really you have no control over. And because of that, I know it's taken a toll on our, on our mindset. It's taken a toll on our activity, but it's got to change, right? It's got to change. And what I want to hit on today is how to make that change. And the first thing is, have you already done your 12 week year or your quarterly goals yes yeah yes or no have you done your quarterly goals have you drawn out what you want out of q4 yes or no yes or no a lot of no's in here and i figured that much 
this is the biggest issue, one of the bigger issues we see with real estate agents. They stop preparing themselves like they should. No, Cynthia, there's no video with this Zoom, no video. Um, it's just that sync logo in my voice. <laughs> so please stay, uh, stay focused with it because I know how hard it is when there's not a video. But here, here's the reality. If you're not properly setting yourself up to prepare yourself to win, it's going to be hard to just randomly win, to just rely on hope as a strategy because hope is not a strategy. You must, when you get off this call, find time in your calendar to identify these things. A, what are my goals in these areas? Write this down. What are my goals in my health, in my relationships, in my personal, which is joy, the things you'd love to do, in my business, which is structure, systems, processes, in my finances, money in, money out, in my spirituality. You have to identify that because there's something called success consciousness. And if you're not identifying what success looks like, as I said prior, it's going to be very hard for the human brain to actually find it. Therefore, your action won't be where it needs to be. And you talk to me next month or, or next quarter, and I say, did you hit your goals? And you say, no. Well, it's because you didn't even identify truly what they were, right? You didn't identify what they were. Then here's the other part of that. You also then write your commitments down to it. I know sometimes we get overwhelmed with these goals, and it's hard for us to hit them because we don't know how sometimes. Um, so what I always love to do is we call these stepping stone goals. In each of those areas, you have a goal. And then in each of those goals, you have a stepping stone goal. So let me give you a very small example. Let's say for the business, your, um, your goal is to make $50,000. Okay, well, you know that you're going to need to set X amount of appointments, right? You know you're going to make, need to make X amount of dials. So you got to start laying that out. Okay, so I want to make $50,000. I need to go ahead. That means to have five closings. If that's your average price point and your commission is 10,000. So how many appointments do I need to set? Well, half of them will probably show. So I need to set at least 10 appointments. Okay. Well, how many dials do you need to make? I really don't know. Well, go ahead and, and stick a number out there that is higher than what you think. And then stay committed to it. And you have these small stepping stone goals, but get very, very granular down to the nitty gritty. A very easy one to kind of break it down if you guys um, have ever had a health goal. I think we all have had health goals. We might all have one right now. Like, all right, like we got the, we got the holidays coming up. You better stay on track because it can go, it can go left real quick. But yeah, this health goal, and I say it's to lose 20 pounds. The biggest mistake people make here in that health goal, and this is in all the goals, is that you don't break it down to the very small detail. It's not that you need to go work out five days a week. The first thing you need to do on that stepping stones is go into my pantry and get rid of all the things that don't serve that goal. Step one. Step two is not to go get a gym membership, is to go to three gyms and see which one you want to get a membership to. Step three is to put a deadline on when you're going to choose what gym you're going to go to. Step four is to go ahead and have a uh, workout plan, right? So you see how I'm stepping stoning my way to that goal, but to the very, very, very like minute detail, right? Francisco, yes, uh, he says, I cannot hear anything. Can you guys hear me? Can you guys hear me? I just want to make sure. Drop a yes into the chat. Boom. Yes, yes, yes. All right. Cool, cool, cool. All right. So the, well, like I said, we want to break it down to the very, very minute little detail. Write this down. In Q4, in Q4 write this down. In Q4, I will dominate the small stuff. In Q4, I will dominate the small stuff. In Q4, I will dominate the small stuff. And I keep saying that because the small stuff is that weekly preparation, is that monthly preparation, is that quarterly preparation. I just saw 95% of you guys didn't do your Q4 goals. And if you did, maybe it's in one area. This has to change, right? Hope is not a strategy. You got to understand what you want and then the commitment to get there. And then you got to dominate the small stuff to make it happen. Right. It's, it's dominating the small so you could win big. Oh, hear me again. It's dominating the small so you could win big. That's how it's done. That is how it's done. And this is in every area of life. But you got to get better at dominating the small stuff. Got to get better at that so you can win big. So that's for the quarterly. Now let's talk about runway season. Runway season is upon us. And some of you guys may know what I'm talking about. 
So you may think I'm talking about models. <laughs> um, runway season is, is upon us. And what that is, is what you're going to start doing here. October, yeah, but definitely November and definitely December. What you do there is they runway into how good your Q1 is going to look of 2023. How good your Q1 is going to look in 2023 is dependent on what you are doing to prepare yourself to dominate that. So if you are not taking these extra leaps, if you are not putting the extra effort in this quarter, you're going to feel the effects Q1. Let's not start slow, right? Let's use October for sure, definitely November and December to catapult our Q1 of absolutely crushing it and get ahead of all of our goals. So it's runway season. But with runway season, like every year, comes holidays, right? Becomes um, all these reasons and excuses why you need to pull off and, oh, I'm going to go all in in January. Our brain likes to trick us and think that that's what it should do. But realize what you do today is going to be massively, massively beneficial, or it could be massively, massively crippling to your Q1 results. You guys with me on that? Drop a yes in the chat if you guys understand what I'm talking about here. And you gotta, gotta be truly engaged with that. Because what we do or don't do today, what we do or don't do this month, what we do or don't do in November will take a toll on us that first quarter of 2023. Then we're playing catch up. And the last piece I'll say to do this, and then we'll jump right into some role playing here, is we talked about the quarterly goals, how about runaway season, is if you're not properly preparing yourself of understanding what you want in 2023, you need to do that. You need to go through a goal setting workshop, take some time away. I'll, I'll kind of break some things down on the next up and coming calls on how we do it. Um, but you really, really, really need to take some time to step away and really ask yourself, what does success look like in 2023? Um, and there's a whole process behind it. But just know that by November 15th, you should have your 2023 plan laid out. And we'll talk about that on the next call. I'll kind of help you guys uh, with that as well. And you could always hit me up on Instagram and I can kind of walk you through it. Um, Adriana says, so the chance to get more deals, uh, the chance to get more deals is until the first quarter. I'm a little confused on, on what you're asking, but what I'm saying was that what you do in November is going to show its face in January, February, March, right? You can't just turn on that, that light switch in January and think that your Q, Q1 is going to crush. It may be good, but how good would have been if you actually, like Bill said here, fill that pipeline, if you started to stay consistent to the habits that you've been falling off of, all right? So when you guys get off this call, set up your quarterly goals in all those six areas, set up your stepping stone goals in order to get there, identify and understand this is runway season, and then make sure that you guys come prepared um, on the next call with a pen and paper, because I'm going to give you guys some tools on how to really, really set yourself up for massive success in every area of life in 2023. Robin said six areas again. Yeah, so the six areas that you got to write your goals down in, it's, it's the wheel of life is what we call it. And this wheel of life is what you're made up of as a human. Area one is going to be your health. And I do a mental and physical side. Area two is going to be your business. When I say business, I mean structure, systems, processes, right? Area three is finances, money in, money out. How much you want to make, right? What is that you want to pay for? All these things. The next is going to be personal, which is joy, the things you love to do, right? I'm here in Destin, Florida, um, Santa Rosa Beach, Florida. So paddleboarding is something I love to do. That's going to be on my joy, right? The next is going to be um, your relationships. And then last but not least is spiritual, whatever that means for you, um, but connecting with um, some kind of, whether it's law of attraction, whether it's God, whatever it is for you, but having a spiritual goal as well. And by the way, I do this quarterly and then monthly and then weekly and then daily. And for those of you that know uh, my process, you guys know this is, this is what we're doing. This is truly what's helped me elevate. And when I find, find myself falling off, because guess what? I fall off too. It's because I stopped doing that. And then every Sunday having a reflection as well. 
That's the last piece of this is if you're not reflecting on the week prior, you're probably going to find yourself on Groundhog's Day. You're going to find yourself beating your head up against that same wall over and over and over again. And when that happens, it's only your fault to blame. So there's a series of questions that I ask myself and, and people around me and the people that I lead of like, there's probably seven or eight questions that I ask. And it just drives and reinforces things like we got to get better at, things that we need to pay attention to, even the wins that we had, right? To go ahead and reinforce that, hey, man, you won here, great job, you know, hit that endorphin release. So whatever it is for you, have a reflection every Sunday, first thing you do, and do it before football. <laughs> for a thing like me, football starts and I'm going to find a way not to get it done. Um, Hazel said, um, sorry, I got late. What's your last name? Last name is Marone, M A. R-R-O-N-E. I'll put it in here for you. And that's the Instagram too, if you wanted to uh, reach out to me about that summit ticket or the conversion ticket. All right, so let's dive into some actual role play. And that's what I want to do today. I want to sit back and I want to hear somebody role play. Um, and I want to go ahead and give you some personal feedback. Okay, so I want to know who here wants to role play a buyer lead. We're going to do buyer leads. Um, ideally somebody that's been using our script or maybe, uh, just found out about it, um, and started to implement it. Who wants to do that? Cool. Raise your hand and I will unmute you. Uh, it looks like you're at a question. Can I attend a conversion day only and not the entire summit? Yes. Yes. If you want to come just to conversion day, you absolutely can. If you're there, I would say, Hey, go ahead and, and, spend the next two days at the summit. But if you want to come to just conversion day, it's the only time we're really doing a conversion day by itself. Um, then definitely 100% get it. And especially because it's only 97 bucks and it's going to make you uh, 50X your income. Yeah, you know, as far as your, your return on investment. All right, let's see here. I'm going to participants. Raise your hand if you want. I'm going to, one second. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to lower the attendees' hands one more time, okay? Because other people before. Okay, now, now go ahead and raise your hand if you want to role play. Now you can do it. <laughs> All right, we got Cynthia. I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna unmute um, you. You guys keep your hands raised because hopefully we can get to two people today. Cynthia, I'm gonna get you to talk here. And get you unmuted. All right, Cynthia, you there? Are you there, Cynthia? Looks like you're unmuted. Sometimes other people can hear you, and I can't. Can you guys uh, hear? You know, this this is John. I might be coming through as Cynthia. Okay, yeah. Well, I'm I'm gonna call you John. Then I won't call you Cynthia. <laughs> <laughs> How you doing, bud? Hey, what's up? What's up, man? So, uh, yeah, you came in on Cynthia. So, tell us your name and tell us uh, where you're tuning in from. Yeah, this is John Cross. I'm in Las Vegas, Nevada. Awesome. I love it, man. We'll be in Las Vegas a few times next year with uh with our Sync U. Hopefully we'll see you there. Um, how long have you been in real estate for, John? Uh, I've been licensed for about nine years. Nine years. Perfect. Okay. You always been in Vegas? Yes. Okay. Love it. Um, have you used our scripts before? Um, and if so, tell me your familiarity with them. I've never that I can remember, I've never really used uh commissions ink scripts uh other other ones i've used like i've i've you know kind of used mike ferry i think more or less internalized them and just kind of done my own thing for sure and and that's the the, the thing right guys just give you guys a heads up whenever we're doing scripting i like to use the word framework versus scripting but um it's always about duplicating right so you duplicate then you iterate duplicate then you iterate and the only way you do that is get really good at it. And the only way you get that is what? By practicing. So uh, whatever scripts you're using, guys, always duplicate, then iterate. I will tell you our scripts, uh, we have a 33% conversion rate from contact to appointment set over the last five years with over 9,500 agents using them. So <laughs> we know it works, um, but I'm excited to kind of hear you role play, bud. I'm going to be the buyer. I want you to give me a call and we'll go ahead and go through some feedback at the end. Does that work? Yeah, that's fine. All right, perfect, man. Give me a ring. Uh, so, yeah, uh, ring, ring. Hello. Hey, Mr. Byer, how are you doing? This is uh, John here in Las Vegas. Uh, looks like you came through our website looking at some properties, and 
I was just calling, giving you a call to see if you had any questions about uh, uh, purchasing real estate here in Las Vegas. I could answer for you right now. No, man. You know, I, I would just I sell your site. I clicked on it, and, and that was it. I was just browsing. Awesome, man. Well, you're 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 on our site. You're looking at, at properties. Are you sure you don't have any questions for me? Are are you here in Las Vegas right now? Yeah, I I, I am. I'm, I'm I'm a local to there. But yeah, I was just browsing, man. Awesome. Uh, are do you do you own a home here in town? Um, I do. Yes. So, are you maybe thinking about purchasing a property, like an extra property for income? Are you thinking about selling your property and buying another one to move into? What's going on? Um, I I really don't know, man. Like I said, I, I saw a home pop up um, from somewhere, I guess. I don't even remember what site it was, but usually when I see that, I'll, I'll click on it. And, uh, and yeah, I was just browsing. Awesome. Hey, did anything about that house, did you, did you like anything about that house? Like, what's, what, 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 why were you looking at it? Yeah, man, to be honest, it had, uh, had a backyard. Um, and, you know, that's, that was huge, you know, that I saw that. I mean, the, the backyard was beautiful. Okay, so what, what what's what's going on? Like, is there is there something going on that you are maybe looking to purchase another house, like in the, in the new future? Like, is there a job change or? No, you know, like I said, I just saw that that house with a beautiful backyard, and I was like, oh man, I, I got to check this thing out. I, I can appreciate so that. So just at the browsing stage. Okay, if, if you were to purchase a property, um, would you be paying cash or would you be financing? Um, you know, I haven't even thought that far down the road, um, but you know, more than likely it'd be, it'd be all cash. Wow. So if you found the perfect property right now and it was everything that you wanted, even a good price, would you go for it? Uh, probably not. I mean, like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm just browsing right now. I appreciate the call though. Okay, great. So how, how long are you going to be looking for? Um, I guess until the, the right home comes on the market for the, for the right price. All right. Well, I, I I don't want to bother you too much, dude. Is it all right if I if I make a search, I'll create a search for you kind of with these parameters on the house that you were looking at? Uh, drop those in your email just every now and again. And if you have any questions in the future, uh, you can reach out to me. Yeah, for sure. Go, yeah, you can go ahead and send me some stuff. Okay, cool. I, I appreciate that, Mr. Buyer. Um, this is my this is my cellular phone number. I welcome your call anytime. Um, I look forward to working with you in the future. Absolutely. Thank you, man. My pleasure. All right. Well, first off, good job, man. Uh, the, the first thing I'd like to say is you raised your hand to jump up here um, and, and you were one of the first people, right? And so I love that that growth mindset. That's huge. Like, let, let, let's be real. How hard it is for somebody to step into a position like this, <laughs> you know what I mean? Just to start role playing. So I appreciate that. Um, I want to definitely go over some things um, that I think are going to help you tremendously. The first thing is, is that you kept going, right? Which I love many agents at that point where I, I was giving you a little bit of a hard time. I was kicking back a little bit, um, would have just definitely jumped off the phone in that first, you know, 60 seconds, <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, yeah. and so you kept going and building that resilience is really, really good. Um, because I, it's, it's, it's very hard to train somebody resilience. You know what I mean? Yeah. So now it's like, how do I get there to be less pushback from you because you already got the resilient side of it. So that was the one thing. Um, the opening line, you you, know, you said a few things um, uh, that we don't use a lot of, right? But you didn't stop when you said it. So for instance, you said, hey, Mr. Byer, how are you doing? And then you kept going. And so we, we train not to say, how are you doing? But at least you didn't wait for me to say something. You know, because the big thing when you say, how are you doing? And you pause, there's a 50-50 chance it could blow up in your face. Right. So you kept cruising through it. So it wasn't as uh, a, a, a bomb that you could have stepped on. But the opening line you ended with, um, you have any questions, um, anything I can do to help you? Correct. Something like that. Yes. All right. What is the average thought of a real estate agent through a consumer? When they hear real estate agent, what do they think about? I would say it's probably negative. Absolutely. Right. They've done like tons of studies on it um, that show that unfortunately the average consumer thinks that they're real estate agents use car salesmen, right? They are sleazy, they're this, they're that. Now, look, we know that's not true, but we have to understand that that's a perspective we're going up against. So the moment you say that 
anything I can do to help you. If that person thinks that you are like a used car salesman, what are the chances they're going to say, yes, you could definitely help me? Minimal. Minimal, right? You're going to get a few that say, oh, yeah, I'm ready, which is great. But you can get a very few that are, are going to be like that type of, yeah, let's go. Most people say, oh, I want to see something. I'll let you know. And so we don't want to say, hey, can I add value to you? When they're like, you have no value. Does that make sense? Yeah. And so the best way for our opening line, I'm going to pull my screen up here. Just give me a minute. So I'll pull it up so you could see it kind of as we go through it. Our opening line is truly uh, a way to start building rapport, right? I was shut off. Um, and then when I said, man, I, you know, I was just browsing. You came back and you're like, oh, tell me, you, you know, you know, why, why were you browsing? Tell me more about that. And you kind of started like to backtrack. I'm going to give you a really simple, I'm pulling this up now, a really simple way to make it flow super, super casual. That's going to break down their walls very quickly. Um, and there's no force to it. So I'm going to share my screen so that everybody could see it. Boom, bada boom, bada boom, bada boom. Okay. So right here, okay, we have the opening line. Can you see this? I see it. All right. So we have the open line. I'll make it bigger for everybody. Let's see if we can do that. There we go. So it's, hey, this is John with the home search site. And you did that, right? You say, Mr. Uh, Mr. Byer, this is John. Uh, kind of like you said, a home search site. Something very, very close to that. I, I said, uh, looks like, or you came through our website. That's what I said. Yes. So you came through our website, right? And so that's not bad. That's not bad at all. Um, but what I like to do is I like to say, hey, I know you're looking at some homes over in Vegas. Uh, just curious, you're looking to make a move in the next few months or, or are you just browsing? And the reason why we're saying just browsing is because you and I both know that higher than the 85% chance, they're going to say they were just looking, just browsing, correct? Yeah. So if we know they're going to say just browsing, the, the human psychology behind it is that we give them that out. Because when we give them the out that they're going to say, their wall comes down and it's the direct line of sight for us to actually build some rapport. Instead of saying, hey, you know, I think I do to help you. It's just like, hey, you're looking to make a move in the next few months or are we just browsing? Yeah, you know, we're just browsing right now. All right, then we say, perfect, man. That's exactly what the site is for. Like you did, you kind of got there, but then you got lost. And it's a very simple question you ask right after they say just browsing. It's like, hey, while I have you, what's, uh, what's prompting you to browse? When you kind of got lost, when I said I was just browsing, you did a great thing by saying, oh, that's exactly what the site's there for. Essentially, you said that. But then the next question must be, hey, well, I have you. What's, uh, what's prompting you to browse? Do you see how much easier this flows? Yeah. Right? It flows into them opening up. Then I, in return, had said, I gave you some bait bombs. Right? I gave you some bait bombs. And one of them was like, man, that backyard. Whew. That backyard. And then what did you do with it when I, when I told you that it was the backyard was the reason why I clicked on that picture? Do you remember what you did with it? Uh, I think I just kind of asked why you're looking, what's going on in your life that's, you know, maybe making you think about purchasing a property. I guess I was just trying to get them to give me their motivation. Yeah, I gave it to you, though. I, I gave you like a little bit of a... Of a Inkland, something to hold on to, something to dig deeper into. Because I see that backyard. Whew. And then you were like, oh, so then, but you know, what's making you want to move versus the, a better approach? As soon as you hear that bait bomb, you say, oh, that backyard, huh? Tell me, what, what was it about that backyard that, that you loved compared to maybe what you have now? Man, they had, you know, a pool, had this, had that. And then they start describing to you and they start painting the picture of why they loved it. Then in return, we say, I'm curious, do you have that now? Do you have a backyard with, with that stuff now? No, I don't. Man, okay, tell me more about that. Tell me, you, you know, why do you want a backyard? Obviously, it's nice enough, but what else do you envision there? And we have them start painting the picture with emotion and true detail. You see where I'm going with that? Yeah. But many times what happens, John, is that we, we unfortunately are thinking about the next question to ask while the person delivering their answer. Yeah. Right? And, and the, but the most beautiful part is that to be honest with you, the next question to ask is being delivered 
in their current answer. So if we were, and everybody on, on the call, write this down, listen to understand, don't listen to respond. We listen to understand and don't listen to respond. And once you do that, and I said, hey, I'm in that backyard. If you were listening to understand, you would have a much higher chance to stop right there and be like, whoa, okay, the backyard. Tell me, like, what'd you love about it? Right? You don't need to overthink and go elsewhere. He's giving it to you. And so many times our, our clients, our, our, our potential clients are giving us that bait bomb, but we are so focused on what to ask next. We're not hearing their answer, which is really what we need to be doing. So it guides us on what to ask next. Does that make sense? Yeah. And then you kind of kept saying like, tell me what's going on with your life. Tell me what's going on with your life. And, and I'm not opposed to that question, but what I want to do is someone that's not giving you enough, you A, B question them. Okay. You A, B question them. So I'll pop it up here. If they're not really giving you much, it's like, okay. Hey, tell me like, you know, if you were looking at something, tell me a little bit more. It'd be like a three bedroom or four. Man, I don't know. I guess probably a four bedroom. Okay, interesting. So tell me, tell me why four bedrooms? Why is that important to you? And now I start getting on track. Like you talked about finding the motivation, but A, B question them versus being so broad. But once you start off the conversation the way that I told you to start the conversation as far as that opening line, these things are going to start to develop itself in a very natural manner. So this is the way a conversation flow should look like. Can, can you see that screen right there, bud? I see it. Okay. So the conversation flow should look like a what question? Man, backyard, right? I want a backyard. Followed by a why question, right? Interesting. Okay. So tell me, like, what was it about that backyard that you loved? Then you listen. They'll tell you. You extract information, you build the conversation. Oh, you know, I really want to be able to barbecue, kick the ball around with the kids, so on and so forth. And I don't go into anything else except I'm listening to what they're saying. Let's say, say is, you know, I want to toss a ball around with his kids. Man, okay, that's awesome. So you want to toss the ball around with the kids. I'm repeating it back to them. How many kids do you have? And now I'm building a conversation, right? And I'm, I'm going to obviously go on a little bit of a tangent there, have a conversation about the kids, how old they are, what sports they play, so on and so forth. And then... You come back in and you continue to go deeper on that same exact feature, which in this case is the backyard. So then you come back in instead of going, oh, okay, so how many bedrooms do you need? No, no, I want to stay here, right? I want to stay here. So what would that mean for you guys to be able to, be able to have a backyard? Man, it'd be amazing to be able to walk out my back door and you know, not have to worry about you know, the neighbors you know, peeking over, having to go to the park all the time. And now they're starting to paint a real good picture for you. Does that make sense? Yep. But overall, man, it was good. It, it was definitely good because you kept pushing, kept pushing. I highly, highly, highly suggest you go to our script. Um, and if you need our script, and we do have a one pager. Uh, if you email, I think it's training at syncpro.com. Uh, but definitely come out to Vegas uh, to our sync you in January. I believe we're going to be there. I'm here. <laughs> um, yeah so that's what i mean so just, just hop on over i don't know where it's going to be it's at one of the, the hotels over there obviously um but it, it's probably the best thing you could do for investing in yourself um in the first quarter of next year um come out to our three-day event um we also if you wanted to come to just conversion day that's day three thanks absolutely any questions no thanks all right man awesome job thank you for jumping in here and being vulnerable i appreciate it my pleasure all right, so hold on, I'm just gonna mute you, brother. All right, so I'm gonna go over here. I want to see, let's see if I can come in here and see what questions we had. All right, so yep, 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 yep. Uh, let's see. Lately, I have buyer asking which home sites I'm calling from. A lot of time, the lead hangs up on me when I finish the opening line. So great question, Riley. So when they, if they're like, oh, what site are you calling from? There's a few things to this. I did, it's not it's not as black and white. One is, are you calling with true confidence in that opening line? Right? Are you calling with true confidence for the opening line? Because if you're not, they're going to find any little thing you say to throw you off track. Because remember, they're in fear mode as well. And so they're trying to find a way to get off the phone. So if you're calling with, hey, this is John with the home search site. Uh, I noticed you like, no energy and lack of confidence, they're going to eat you up. So that's number one. Number two is, does your tonality at the end of it 
come off very basic and you don't have much flow or is it curiosity, right? So I'll share my screen. Let me show you what I mean by this. Where is she at? Boom, 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 boom. Okay, so are you saying, hey, this is John with the home search site. I noticed you were looking over in Destin at some homes. Just curious, are you looking to make a move in the next few months or are you just browsing, right? That right there is, is very salesy, super flat versus good energy, confidence, and then tonality. And it sounds like, hey, this is John with the home search site. Uh, I noticed you were looking over in Destin at some homes. Uh, just curious, were you looking to make a move in the next few months or are you just browsing? They don't even pick up home search site because the just browsing is so non-intimidating, right? Otherwise, if you go flat, they're gonna pick up, oh, home search site, nope. Now, let's just say they were like, eh, what home search site are you with, right? It's like, oh, find homes in Destin.com. I was giving you a call. Were you looking to, to make a move or, or were you just browsing? I'm gonna give them the search name or the site name, but then I'm gonna run right into the very bottom part of the scripts. So I was just calling to see if you're looking to make a move or, or if you were just browsing. Yeah, I'm just browsing. And I go right back into the script. If they say what site it is, it's because you're not confident, possibly. Your tonality isn't good and it's it's non-intimidating. It should be non-intimidating and a curious tonality at the end. Uh, but then number three, if, even if they do say it, you tell them what it is, but don't stop. You go right back into the very bottom part of this opening line. Um, so you flow right into it. Let's see. I'm going back here to the chat. I'm going to stop the share. Any questions and does that help? I think that was Riley, right? Does that help, Riley? And, and what I would say is you need to track, not just you, everybody needs to practice the opening line. Like it's so good at it. So good at it. Like that's the first thing you should be role playing for the next two weeks for 15 minutes a day. Just the opening line. Boom, 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 boom. Over and over and over again. And watch how good you get. Watch how good you get. Um, Tammy said, what about re-engaging with old leads? So when you say old leads, um, my question is, do you mean that they have never been spoken to or just people that you already spoke to and you're just following up with them? Because I want, I want to get clarity on what you mean so I give you the right answer. Um, while you write that down, Robin said, old leads already spoken with. Okay. Um, so old leads already spoken with. That's a whole different script, right? Because if you actually spoke to them and like you built conversations, it's just like a, a call in there. You could actually say, how you doing? Hey, John, how you doing, man? Uh, it's John over here in Destin. You know, we spoke several times about you looking for a home. Uh, just curious, man, how's, how's the search going for you? And I'm just, just really trying to pick at the, I'm just calling to get clarity on what I need to change for you. And that's it. Now, if it's a lead that you never spoke to, it's the same exact approach. When you say old lead, if it's somebody that you never spoke to, but they've been in the system for a thousand days, call them. And the same exact approach as far as if it's a five a lead that came in five minutes ago or a lead that came in five years ago, it's the same approach if you never talked to them. Uh, Robin said, how do you overcome? I have a real estate agent already. So I like this one. I'll, I'll actually hit on this. So one is first don't ask. They're working with an agent already. If you're doing that, then um, there's a good chance they're going to say yes, even when they don't. But let's just say they came out with it and say, look, I totally get it. If I were to find you something that was, that was off market, but checked off all your boxes, do you want me to shoot that over to you? What are they going to say? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, perfect. Look, I don't, I don't want to send you a bunch of useless emails. I know we, we probably both get enough of those. So tell me, what are the, the boxes that you're trying to check off? So I'll do it one more time and I'll tell you what the end result will usually be. So they say, you know, I'm just, I already have an agent. Okay, look, I totally get it. Um, but quick question, if I were to find something that checked off all your boxes, do you want me to send that on over to you? Right, or all your boxes, that's not on the market yet. Do you want me to send that on over to you? Yeah, for sure. Okay, perfect. Um, look, I don't want to send you a bunch of useless emails. Um, I, know, <laughs> I know that's obviously... Uh, you know, we get enough of those. So tell me a little bit more about these boxes you're trying to check off, right? And then you're gonna have the conversation. And what you're gonna find is at the very end of this is one of two things. One, guess what? They're not working with an agent. And that's the majority of the time. They're not working with an agent. They're just using that as a defense mechanism to get off the phone, 
right? And then they're going to come out and they're going to look at your stuff. They're going to reach out to you or they may say right then and there, actually, I haven't talked to my agent in a while. Um, I definitely would love to go ahead and meet with you, right? Or, okay, if you see anything I like, I'll let you know. And what they'll do is they'll sit back for a few minutes and then they will reach out to you in, in that due time, right? But the cool thing is you're going to add more value than any agent probably that's given them a call. Now, on the flip side, let's say they are working with an agent. Like truly are. Uh, one thing is, is 2% of people get the buyer agency agreement signed, but that's neither, neither here nor there. But what you will find out is because you dove deep, you built a very good relationship. You understand what their, their true motivation is, not the surface one. Remember, the first why is always a lie. First why is always a lie, right? My backyard, I want a bigger backyard. That's not the why. It goes way deeper than that. But if they go ahead and, and you know, you build a rapport and they're already working with somebody, you let them go, not pushing the issue, right? No matter what, you let them go. And what you're going to see is that person more than likely will find a reason why their agent, that they didn't sign a buyer agency agreement with in the first place, is dropping the ball or they don't truly understand their problem and they'll reach back to you. Now, one of those two things can happen. There's a good chance that it's probably number one, but either one or number two, but you also missed a hundred percent of the shots you don't take and i'm not trying to step on these you know, another agent's toes or anything i'm just trying to say hey i can send you some stuff too if you want right let me know if if you know i can be a value to you if for some reason you know you and your agent don't work out right that's it very simple they're going to make that decision on their own and because we're adding way more value than the other agent because they're probably just glorified applebee servers just door openers and they're not adding true value and, and digging deep into their lifestyle and what they're trying to create you'll probably read the rewards more often than not. Does that make sense? Does that help without having an agent objection? Um, let's see here. If they say just browsing, what are two good things to ask next uh, so that we could have the conversation going? Yeah, so so once again, I'll pull it up. This is the, there's not two or three things. There's one thing, right? We try to keep things really simple uh, because success loves simplicity and success loves speed. Okay, so when they say just browsing, you give them like a little, okay, man, great job, right? So perfect, amazing, right? phenomenal, whatever your, your word is that fit in right here, doesn't need to be perfect. Then you say, that's exactly what the site is for. We're giving them that like, hey, great job. You're doing the right thing. And then the next question is very simple. Hey, while I have you, what's, uh, what's prompting you to browse? but I threw in something there. I want to see if you guys catch it. What did I do here? There's a few things that you guys are, are probably going to hear, but in this line right here, listen to how I say it. They say they're just browsing. And I say, perfect. Look, that's exactly what the site is for. Hey, while I have you, what's, uh, what's prompting you to browse? In a chat, tell me, what did you hear there that I did? I got to stop the share because I can't see the chat. Let's see. Boom, voice, pause, casual, tonality. You said, uh, all of the uh, above, right? All of the above. But the big pieces there, I'll open it for you guys again, is yes, the tonality, right? The curiosity tonality. The curiosity tonality drops down at the very end, right? What's prompting you to browse? Versus, perfect, that's exactly what the site is for. Well, I have you, what's prompting you to browse? All right, when I said it, perfect. That's exactly what the site is for. Hey, while I have you, what's uh? Right, someone said, I said the word uh, absolutely. What's uh, what's prompting you to browse? It's such a different response when you say it like that. Perfect, that's exactly what the site is for. Hey, while I have you, what's uh, what's prompting you to browse? So, just so you guys know, it's the same thing, but it's said a different way. And it makes such a different outcome, such a different outcome. Um, let's see, I'm going back up here. But you guys were all right for the most part. But the, the saying the word, uh, and then that tonality of asking, just browsing, um, but that it's called curiosity tonality. Oh, yeah, that, Gabrielle, 100%, way more casual. Like, I'm, look, here's, here's the thing. I'm just calling to get clarity on your situation to give you clarity that I'm the right person for you. And I'm doing that by getting curious, right? Write this, write this down. 
Curiosity creates cash. Curiosity creates cash. And clarity creates cash. Like that's it right there. Like you don't need to make sales hard and rigid and formal. It shouldn't be. You're going to get burned out. You need to have more curiosity. You need to be getting clarity on their situation at a very deeper, a much deeper level than you probably currently are. And you need to understand that you got to ask better questions to get better results. Ask better questions to get better results. Um, let's see, how do you transition into asking to book an appointment either in person or over Zoom if the conversation went well? I'll hit you with that in a second. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll do the close here in a second. Um, you know, I'll pop it up now. Who wants to learn more about the close? And once again, this is super simple. Um, it's, it's not that hard as far as like what you need to say, but it's about just saying it. <laughs> and that's the problem, right? We have where it's like, I know I should ask for the appointment, but I don't want to be too pushy. You know, it's, it's, I don't know about you, but it's not being pushy if you really could serve somebody, right? In order to serve you, I could have to sell you. It's just the way it works, right? So let me share my screen here. All righty. Okay. So here it is. This is the close. You had a great conversation with them. Now there's key points to this close. Okay. The next step in the process is super simple. That little phrase right there goes a very long way. The next step, process, super simple. Let's set up a quick and easy, another important phrase, quick and easy 15-minute meeting. Now, that could be Zoom or that could be face-to-face, -face, whatever it is for you. And obviously, that situation. This way, we could show you our, I put win strategy, but you should have your own custom methodology that is your own strategy or game plan, whatever it might be, and bring a list of hand-picked homes for you on bring more value. So what works better for you, weekdays or, or this weekend? So I had a great conversation. It's like, all right, perfect. Look, the next step in the process is super simple. Uh, let's just set up a quick and easy 15-minute meeting. Uh, this way I can show you our win strategy. And we could also bring you a list of uh, some hand-picked homes. So what works better for you, weekdays or, or this weekend? Okay. Now, if they still push back, here's the gold, 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 gold close. They're like, I just really don't know. I still might want to wait a little bit, right? Because it's going to happen. See, so look, I totally get it. Look, I just want to make sure you got the right person with the right strategy for the right time. Does that sound fair? Yeah, okay, I get it. Perfect. I'm not going to ask you to go buy a house tomorrow. Um, I just want to make sure that, you know, when you do decide to buy a house, whether it's you know, six months or six years from now that you do have the right person with the right strategy. So what works better for you? All right, so I hit him with this. Next step in the process is super simple. Let's just set up a quick and easy 15 minute meeting. Uh, so we can show you our strategy and bring you a list of uh, some hand-picked homes. So what works better for you, weekdays or, or this weekend? Uh, I don't know if I really, not really sure if I really want to meet. I might want to wait a couple months. Look, I totally get it. Look, I just want to make sure you got the right person with the right strategy for the right time. Does that sound fair? All right, any questions on that close? Hazel asks, can I get these slides? Um, if you shoot me uh, if you shoot me a message on, on Instagram, I can get it to you or I can get you the, the, um, the uh, email. Sorry, I drew a blank. <laughs> the email to go ahead and do that. What's the Insta? Um, here you go. That's the Insta. I just dropped into the, slot, uh, the chat. So if you want to hit me up, I can go ahead and send it to you. Some of what you're looking for. I know some people want to come to our conversion day in Atlanta. So if that's the case, when it comes to conversion day in Atlanta, it's only 97 bucks. Hit me up on uh, Insta and I can get, send you that as well. But definitely hit me up on there. But hit follow me first. Not saying next I want more followers, even though that's a massive plus. But otherwise, it's going to go into other. So And I don't always check those. All right, let's see what other questions we have come in here. Let me see, let me see. All right, messages, right? Messages. So that's, I, I don't leave voicemails. Remember, how do we start this call? And we talked about, they think of you as a used car salesman. So if you're a used car salesman in their eyes, unfortunately, 
and you say, hey, I'm a used car salesman on your voicemail, the next time they see that number come up, are they going to answer? Probably not. Probably not. So we don't want to kind of show our cards right out the gate. So I don't leave voicemails. Now, if it's somebody I spoke to already, they're they'll block you for sure. Um, if it's someone I spoke to already, I will leave a voicemail. But I leave a voicemail that has, write it down, the voicemail must have uh, familiarity, urgency, and a call to action. Okay? That sounds something like this. <clears throat> Let's just say, because I'm over here in Santa Rosa Beach. Uh, by the way, you can send all your referrals to me. I got gotcha. you. Uh, because um, I'm actively um, in real estate as well. Or I'm not just on here talking. Uh, this is actually what we do on a daily basis. Um, so they go ahead and they say, yeah, looking for, you know, four bedroom, two bath on the beach for, you know, 1.5 million, whatever the case is. But then they kind of ghost. Well, when I call and we do follow up because I dedicated time for follow up, dedicated time for calling leads never talked to, dedicated time for lead generation, dedicated time. So I'm not like mixing my follow up calls with new lead calls. I'm saying laser focused on what it needs to be. Okay, what it needs to be. So let's just say we're on our follow up hour. And so we call during a follow-up hour and they don't answer, but I know what they're looking for because I talked to them. I say, hey, Eric, uh, there's actually a home that just came on the market that's over, um, that has golf front views, it has a four bedrooms, two bath, um, and it's right in that price range. So do me a favor and call me back right away so we can go ahead and, and get you some eyes on it before it's gone. Okay, you guys with me on that? So I, what did you hear? Right, you heard me say familiarity, four bedrooms, two bath, that has golf views. Then you heard me say some urgency, how she just came on the market, not sure how long it's gonna last. And then a call to action, which is very simply, call me back so I can get uh, get some eyes on it for you. Okay, um, let's see. When do you call people back who don't pick up? Like that's my, I don't are you talking about like follow-up with people you spoke to already? or just a, like a people just never answered. It's people that never spoke to them. When do you call them back? Over and over again, you don't stop. You keep calling them, you keep calling them. I know it sounds crazy, but the average person takes 19 months for them to be on your site in order to actually buy or sell a home. But we don't know where they're at in the process. They could be 18 months in and they just jumped on. So the, the deal is never dead, that the lead is never gone. So you keep calling. Yeah, never trash the lead. You keep calling. No, look, if you only have like five people in there, Claudia, then I don't want you calling that person every day. No, definitely not. If you got a, you know, a very few amount of leads you can call, then you got to be strategic, 100%. Yeah, 100%. Um, and what we teach is a three by five, right? And what, I, what we do about this, and, and maybe you guys could take this and start implementing it because it works really good, is three hours a day, five days a week. One hour is calling leads you never spoke to. One hour is going to be follow-up of leads that you already spoke to. And then one hour is going to be lead generation. But now, Claudia, let's just say, man, I don't even I don't have enough leads to call for an hour. Well, then you got to take some of that time and say, okay, well, I don't, I'm not going to like not do anything for that hour. Now, instead, I'm going to go and use that extra half hour to do what? lead generation, right? And that lead generation could be social media, it could be partnerships, whatever it might be. So that three by five, three hours a day, five days a week, and mix up the call times, mix up the call times. When's the best time to call? Honestly, whenever, every time we do our conversion day, look, we do it from 2.30 to 3.30 and we crush our calls, right? We get people to answer, yeah, sometimes they don't, but like we dominate during that time. Now stats will show you the best times are from eight to 10. And from four to six, four thirty, six thirty, right? So like, those are great times. But you also need to mix it up, right? You got to mix it up because you want to make sure that you're not calling like, the same lead over and over again at the same time. Um, as well as you should be mixing it up anyway because if you know they're the best times to call, then so does everybody else. Which means their calls are going to be cluttered with other people calling. Does that make sense? Um, what if they block you? Do you delete them? No, I mean, <laughs> you know, it, especially when I'm using a dialer, it just goes through really quick. Uh, but I don't delete them. No, because maybe it's a temporary block. All right, but let's not give them a reason to block us. What else? What other question? We got about three minutes. Any last questions?
Can you give those call windows again? Um, yeah, for sure. So um, the best times per the studies they've done is going to be from, let's say, 8 o'clock to 10 o'clock, 7.30 to 9.30-ish, right? I don't let to go. I usually don't let to go before 7.30, to be honest, um, but 7.30 to 9.30. And then again, from four to six, 4.30 to 6.30, but don't sleep on midday calling. Don't sleep on early morning, Saturday calling. Like that's a lot of times where the gold is. What evenings are best? There isn't any. I just know if it's a Friday night, they're probably out doing stuff and, and it's gonna be hard to get a hold of somebody. Um, and just know Monday mornings suck. So they don't wanna talk to you. <laughs> I stay away from Monday mornings and Friday nights. Right? But Friday, like, 3.30? Yeah, I'm okay with that because their their mindset is a lot different, right? They're good. They're feeling better. Um, but also you got to figure if you're in Vegas, like my man John was, I'm not calling people at seven o'clock in the morning because there's a good chance that they're probably, they're good guys are like a little bit different, right? I was talking to not call on the weekend. Oh, you definitely should be calling on the weekend without a doubt. Without a doubt. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. All right, look, guys, we're about to wrap up here real quick before we jump off. Once again, we have our summit coming up. Look, we have Eric Thomas, ET, the hip hop preacher. He's going to be keynoting. I'm doing a session over there um, that's going to be talking about how to become the top 10% in any market. So you got ET doing a session. You got myself doing a session. You got a bunch of other great, amazing speakers. And then the day before, October 19th, First time in a long time, we're doing a conversion day only. It's only 97 bucks. Like, get there, get there, get there, get there. Um, make sure you guys come ready to learn. But if you have any questions, let me know. Hit me up on Instagram at real John Marone, at real John Marone. Uh, we can go ahead and answer any questions you have and hook you up with any kind of uh, clarity that you need. But other than that, I appreciate you guys jumping on today. I'll be back in two weeks but from now until then don't hesitate to reach out uh, i want to make sure that you guys get the answers you need to any questions you have so appreciate you guys love you guys it is the fourth quarter of 2022 please make sure you use this as runway season start preparing your quarter if you haven't done so already get yourself set for 2023 by using november and december to truly launch yourself into a whole nother dimension in Q1 2023. Appreciate you guys. Love you guys. Go crush it. And uh, if I don't hear from you, if I don't see you, I'll see you guys in two weeks.